I suppose from a from a um, job seeker perspective, um, I saw a statistic yesterday that said it's in New Zealand it's about eighty three percent or something, um, quite high, that uh, get their job from their network or their personal connection. So I think that that probably is one of the biggest causes of the fact that we we struggle to attract. Um, diverse seller because we're actually looking in our networks and that's not to do necessarily with the fact that we're giving jobs to our friends but really it's about the fact that we know this person it's a lot easier when I can have a coffee with them or it's a lot easier that you know someone that I know knows this person um, none of the jobs that I've had in my accounting professional life have been through applications they've been through a connection where people end up in life somebody commits suicide every 40 seconds around the world it used to be every 15 hours here in New Zealand now it's even 14 hours worse than men. You know, it used to be three to one, now it's four to one. I think your position and your status, your, your financial freedom, it, it is a huge predicator to where people end up. Kind of going back to the structural stuff is that the leadership needs to really take on and champion that because if you don't have the buy-in, I suppose, from the top as well, um, it's not, it's not going to kind of fly through. Um, the now Peter, action points. Stuff for us to work on. Man, get excited about it. Um, diversity and having diverse teams and different thoughts and different experiences and religions. That's awesome. It's it's so much more enjoyable and you learn so much as you go. So I would say don't be afraid of it. Enough money. We spend $54 billion on health and social services, of which 90% is actually spent on counselling people after something's gone wrong. There's enough money to go around to help. You know, it's like... Social entrepreneurs like to talk, you know, because they're creating uh, pathways and jobs for, for, for our people. Our people don't want counselling, our people want to actually thrive, and employment is a big predicator of how we, we end up in life. Thank you very much. What do you think, is, what do you think is, is a really key, if you could just give us one really key action point uh, to take away and, and, and to work up from today? Yep. Um, so, um, I made the point before, every, we're all equal, but we're not identical, and it's those differences that are special, and we need to develop and nurture, and those are the ones that are going to make us successful in whatever careers or, or life we have. Um, and the key there is it's about all of us. It's not about the person sitting at the top or the board or the HR department. We've all got responsibility for this. So my takeaway for you all is it doesn't matter what job you do, you're all responsible for diversity and inclusion and the interactions you have. Look, it's wonderful. Uh, most of our large corporates are appointing heads of diversity and inclusion, uh, implementing DNI programs left, right, and centre, uh, bringing in external consultants, uh, writing strategies, uh, making major public statements about uh, what they're doing in the DNI space and, and where they're at on their DNI journey. And we're all doing this because it's the right thing to do. Uh, but we're also doing it because of some fairly, fairly major, uh, credible research that consistently points uh, to the positive impact uh, of DNI on operational performance. First, I would encourage you to see those diversities, those skill sets, and competencies that can actually help elevate your organisation uh, to another level. Just actively go out and recruit. If, if you want to have a diverse workforce, actively get out and do it. Like... Um, and that's really where, I guess that's really the challenge for us is to be, to do the hard work, um, as um, we've said before, to do the hard work, to go out there, to go outside your network um, and find candidates that are from diverse backgrounds, 